Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater. It's Socialing the Distance. Today, our guest is Dathan Ritzenheim. He is a three-time Olympian. He is a man who's gone under 13 minutes for the 5,000 and under 208 in the marathon. And he has taken his experience um, in the sport and also um, coaching in college. And now he's going to be with the on-running elite team. And Dathan, welcome to Socialing the Distance. Thank you for having me, Larry. Now, where are you at? Are you in Michigan? I am in Boulder, Colorado right now. So oh, the team, cool. The, the team, uh, the On Athletics Club is going to be based here in town. And so, okay. um, so yeah, we, we've been in town for about five weeks now. And wow. uh, everybody's been training in, uh, together as a group. And uh, yeah, I think the, some of the women uh, still need to kind of move into their houses. We've, they've had a little house like a training camp going on uh, uh-huh. in the last five weeks. But the guys are all in their places. And um, yeah, we've been we've been going uh, going at it for about five weeks here, and some of the people I was working with before, um, but uh, everybody's been together now and just kind of waiting to finally come out of the shadows and you know be able to wear the OAC on their uh, on their on their vest. So we're going to do that this weekend in our first uh, real competition, and yeah, we're looking forward to it. Where's the competition going to be? So we're heading to Music City uh, in Nashville this weekend, and um, sure. really it's. I mean, other than the inner squad races and uh, um, and little pop up meets that have gone on this summer, it's kind of the first first and one of the only real uh, track meets, I guess you would say, to go forward. So, um, so we're looking forward to that. It's uh, you know a completely different world in this COVID. We got to get our sure. everybody's passed their COVID tests and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, we're we're still looking forward to you know we replace Tokyo you know, with the opportunities that come along. And so this sure. will be the first one. It's a very interesting time, as you said. And um, I think we need to celebrate on running for investing in elite running right now. It's really over the last 20 years, as, as you know, you've been a beneficiary of it, is that the, the, um, the elite group training has really helped build American distance running. Yeah, it's, it's changed big time since uh, I signed my first, uh, you know, contract coming out of school in 2004. There really was, I mean, you had the Hansons and uh, um, I guess Mammoth, uh, USA Mammoth and um, Zap, Zap were going then, but uh, but maybe not funded like they are now with the, you know, shoe companies. And so, um, so on is, uh, you know, the fastest growing running company in the world right now. And so they're really going to try to, uh, they're going in big with our team, uh, with the on athletics club. And so, um, I'm excited, you know, we're innovating off product and, uh, and we're on, on calls with Zurich all the time, getting, getting new stuff out there. So it's, it's going to be exciting time for us. And the team is young and they're ready. They're, they're all coming out of school and just, you know, really excited, uh, to be part of it. Um, give us the names of, uh, athletes that you'll be coaching right now. So right now we have eight, eight runners. Uh, I'll start down the, the line with the men. So we have Joe Klecker, uh, a sure. couple time, uh, NCAA runner up. Uh, I think he would have won some titles, uh, this spring if, uh, you know, competition had gone forward, but, mm-hmm. um, so went to CU. So he's the only guy from Boulder. Then we have, uh, Oliver Vohr from Wisconsin just ran three fifty six and a mile up here, um, at, uh, at 5,100 feet. So he's very wow. good. Shape. Sure. Yeah. 1500 meter champion two years ago. Um, then we have Carlos Villari- uh, Villarreal from uh, Arizona, mm-hmm. NAM champion last year. Yep, did a piece um, on him. Yep. yep, great guy. And then we have Jordy Beamish from NAU, so also another in- indoor NCAA champion in the mile. Um, so our, our men's team is a little bit more middle distance oriented initially, but Joe, you know, Joe is, he comes from the marathon pedigree too. His, his, yeah. his family is, uh, his mom was an Olympic marathoner and his dad, a world record holder and 50 miles. So, and then on the women's side, we have, uh, Alicia Monson, uh, from sure. Wisconsin. Yep. 3,000. Yep. 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 One Milrose. Um, we have, uh, Leah Fallon, formerly O'Connor, um, from who I, I coach now, um, before this, um, also Emily Orn, a nine time D two champion from Hillsdale. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I coached her previously and then Alicia Konicek, a nine time D two champion from Western, uh, Western state, uh, as well. And she was a world university games champion last year. And, uh, so we have eight people all young and ready to go. They're excited. What's your philosophy of coaching? 
So I, you know, I, I worked with, uh, I worked with four different coaches in my, uh, collegiate and professional career. And mm-hmm. I don't take high school really. Cause you know, sure. we just threw it, we threw everything at the wall and whatever stuck, you know, like, yeah. stuck. but, uh, but in college, very, just very distinct, uh, you know, training differences all, all across the board. So truthfully, a lot of the, um, I'm not reinventing the wheel. I think on a lot of the training, um, I took, what I think are the best things. A lot of the workouts I took right from those coaches. Um, but, uh, I do have quite a bit of an emphasis on, um, you know, threshold training year round, but, um, but we start speed fairly early and, uh, it just, I guess, you know, maybe it's not, it's periodized, but maybe not as extreme as like Mark Wetmore was my sure. coach and he was a hardcore Arthur, Arthur Lydia disciple. And sure. so it's a little, maybe a little less than that, but, uh, mm-hmm. But I think uh, a lot of it, truthfully, is getting them to believe in you know themselves, and they're all starting at different points. So I can't take one philosophy and give Carlos the same you know the same training as uh, Joe Klecker because they definitely are on different ends of the spectrum. I mean, Carlos has ran 146, and Joe has run uh, well. He hasn't ran a 10k yet, but uh, um, but he's really more a distance guy and. Uh, sure. But uh, I think uh, just developing them year round, I think, is important. Uh, you know, some some of the uh, some of the really good coaches out there right now. I mean, you know, Jerry Schumacher, for example, they just they develop year in and year out and get a little bit stronger. And I think there is a lot to that. So um, you know, we got to be ready on race day, but we also got to get better from year to year when they're only twenty two or twenty three years old. First time I saw you ever run, uh, I showed up at uh, the Foot Locker. And it was you and uh, I was a Josh. Uh, was it Hartman? Uh, Jason Hartman. Jason Hartman. Yeah. yeah. And you guys uh, finished there. And I remember talking. I think you were fifteen. So it's been a while. Um, but I think you give a wonderful example of the breadth of what uh, 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 an American distance runner can do. Um, how long do you think an athlete takes? to develop to be an elite athlete where, where, where's, where's your thoughts on that well i think a lot of times it's easy to rush a super talent um especially like in for myself i mean i could just do a lot when i was young but i kind of mm-hmm. paid the price later on i had a lot of injuries i think really yeah. as a result of running 100 miles a week when i was 17 and sure. um i mean i just trained hard all the time you know like there was no sense of rest and recovery when i was younger um so you know, someone like, um, you know, someone like Joe, for example, I mean, he's training a hundred to 110 miles a week. So we still have to have somewhere to go with him. So, but all the work workouts we've done over the last three, four months that I've been working with him, they're so much longer than the workouts he was doing at CU, but the volume of his total training is similar. So I don't want to bump him up at all. Um, cause I wanted him to have a long enough career that, yeah, we can, in four or five years, maybe go to the marathon. We always have somewhere to go. Whereas like Carlos, for example, we didn't change his volume either. The mm-hmm. workouts, the volume went way up and he was tired all the time because it just was a different, uh, it's a different, um, it's a different level. I mean, when you come from college, sure. you know, to the pro- professional ranks, everybody's a little bit better. It's the same thing in high school. You can be a superstar. There's just not that much depth of competition college it gets a little harder afterwards everybody's good if you're if you're running in professional races you're running against people that are are there to be professionals and so Mm -hmm. we no longer do races where you just beat up on people and you're way way better than them you really only do races people of similar caliber and so um sometimes i think it can be difficult i know i still i struggled with that early on in my career i wanted to do 130 miles a week right out the gate and you know I, I remember though, a couple of coaches, I mean, Mark Wetmore told me, you always have to have somewhere to go. And yeah. when I came in, he actually toned my training down to 85 miles a week. And, wow. uh, I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I was very stubborn. <laughs> so. What, um, what does on running want you to accomplish with the club? Well, on running, like I say right now, they are the fastest growing running company, uh, in, in the world right now. And so, uh, it's only a 10 year old company though. And so it's expanded very rapidly. And, uh, but the leadership there at the company, uh, the executive team, the executive board, I think they see this team as a real, 
uh, prime mover for um, developing products that's really in the performance line, you know, and I mean, it's already cool. We get people all the time saying, you know, like they want to know about the shoes. They might not know anything about running, but the product looks amazing. Yeah. And the team really likes, you know, like we, we are on calls with, uh, with the, um, the footwear team all the time and they really want to push now into the performance line and, and build off from that. We have spikes and, you know, that have been made now. We, um, we really see it as, uh, especially like I think this North American market uh, is really important to the growth of, of this company too. Sure. And us as a, as a brand, you know, we we're taking, but we are an international brand yeah. you know, it's for a Swiss brand. And so we are an international team. Half of our team right now is made up of people who aren't Americans. We have a uh, Ollie's in Australia and Jordy's in New Zealand. Uh, Carlos is from Mexico and Alicia is from Poland. And, and we want to, a diverse, you know, group of people that fit the globe. You know, we want it, we want people to be inspired, and so our team is representative of the brand in general in that way—a a true international uh, team and a true international brand. Sure. Um, I'm going to throw a couple questions from your career. Um, what was tougher for you, going under 13 minutes for 5,000 meters, or going under 208 in the marathon? Well, the, the two o definitely the marathon <laughs> because yeah. the when I ran twelve fifty six and broke the American record in the five k, um, it was a bit of a surprise. Truthfully, like uh, I had, I, mean, I hadn't plateaued, but um, I had had a lot of performances in the thirteen fifteen type range, but quite a few races where I went out really hard and I died, or yeah. I um, it maybe bad weather, bad luck, things like that. Um, but I had already ran 811 for two miles a couple of years before. So yeah. we, I think we knew that that was capable It just getting in that right race. And then everything was perfect, you know, in that race. And, and I remember getting done and feeling like I could have gone faster and, you mm -hmm. know, like, but the marathon, man, that, I think that was my sixth or seventh marathon before I yeah. really ran a great one. And likewise, I always went out for it. Um, uh, often going through 6250 to 6330 and then really struggling at the end. And uh, I just was always a, someone who swung for the fence and it's a lot harder. The mistakes are a lot bigger in the marathon, I think. So sure. you, you can fade from 13 minutes to 13, 15, and it doesn't sound so bad, but when you uh, go out on 205, 206 pace, 211, 212 is really rough the last 10 K. <laughs> yes. Yes. What about um, your experience over 10,000 meters? Um, you know, it's probably the event that I liked the least <laughs> uh -huh. I did the best at. Uh, yeah. or, I mean, I made three, I made three world championship teams and two Olympic teams in the 10 K. So mm -hmm. most of my international, you know, finals were in the 10 K, but I really hated running 25 laps on the track. Um, I liked the road race distance. I was just very good at it, but, yeah. um, but man, it was always brutal to be in spikes and run 25 laps. And you know, that five K to eight K, is just it's so tough to stay in it stay focused and so when i was six at the world championships uh, you know i think i was top 10 at the world championships you know three times and mm -hmm. um but it was hard it was always hard i mean the east african dominance was always you know very strong in that event and so um even when i was sixth I, you know I, I was fairly close to fourth uh that i think only a couple seconds but never never too close to third and and uh um, I think I just didn't have the wheels to close on the track very well. I, I was very good at, I could run 1256, but I just could never close in faster than 56. And that was one of those things I always, a mistake I think I made early on in my career. I never developed speed, um, mm -hmm. you know, in my, er, my late teens, early twenties and something coach Wetmore had always wanted me to do is focus a little more on the 1500. I mean, my 1500 PR was from my freshman year and I think yeah. I could have ran, 336, you know, or, you know, something like that. I just never, I just always wanted to go to the long stuff. And I think I missed the boat there. How do you take your experiences as an athlete, incorporate in that into how you're coaching uh, your athletes now? Well, I think, you know, everybody needs a little bit of something different. So yeah. like some people ultimately, you know, getting them to believe in themselves and feel, feel ready, I think is important. Mm -hmm. And so 
but everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. And um, I always, you know, like people say, you got to work on your weaknesses, but I think you just always have to play to your strengths at the end of the day. Okay. You're, you're going to feel good, you know, like in those, those things, it's going to make you mentally feel better and you have to work on those weaknesses, but you can't obsess on them either. And so, um, so I think taking the mis- a lot of the mistakes that I made is I was always trying to fix things. Maybe mm-hmm. that, you know, like I, I would run out of fuel in the marathon or I, after, after I, years later, I was like, oh, I didn't have enough speed. I'd try to go back and work on those instead of just being like, these are my strengths. I'm going to work on these. I'm going to take a little bit of time to spend on my weaknesses, and just get better and better and better. I was always rushed. I was always like, let's come back. Let's, let's, uh, I got I'm missing this part. I'm missing that part. And, and mm-hmm. so I just, I needed to, I had, I needed to have more direction, I think, and focus. And I was just very difficult probably to coach in some ways because uh, that, I guess maybe I thought that I knew better than the, the coaches that had been doing it for a while. And so sure. I'm a, I'm hoping that the, every ath- all these athletes, they know that I've, I've made the mistakes before, you know, so mm. I'm just going to try to help them avoid those mistakes and their talent sure. is already there. We've, you know, we've identified the people that we think are going to be great. So we already believe in them. We just need them to believe in themselves and, and to trust us to, to give them all the support they need. And so I hope that's what I hope to do with them. So many of the championship races from, the 1500 to the marathon are done in places that are quite warm uh, during a championship. I mean, I recall Sevilla where the men's marathon went out in 1819 for the first 5k and they were the top five finished right around 14 minutes for the last 5k. How do you, and and you saw that in in, in the 10,000s every time. I mean, it, it, I, I remember putting notes down, my God, they're race walking for the first couple K and then someone would take it off, you know, and just to death say a lot of times, you know, yep. uh, normally I could close my eyes and know that he was going to start running with about seven K to go. Um, how do you instill that in your athletes? How do you teach them when they're feeling really good? Hey, you got to save that for the last thousand. Well, you know, yeah, you're right. Every, almost every race is won or lost in the last 200 meters or even really, you know, yeah. like even, and lately even marathons are won or lost in the last 200 meters. And while it's a little bit different mechanism at the end of the day, you just, it doesn't matter how fast you can sprint. It matters how strong you are. And so we do put a lot of emphasis on that and you have to be ready to run fast when you're tired. And, um, I think some coaches think, you know, differently. I do think you have to, you can only work on pure speed probably when you're fresh, but Mm -hmm. it's a skill to run fast when you're tired too, mentally and physically. And so I, I have a lot of cues that I tell them, you know, and I mean, on the race day, I'm not there. I, it doesn't matter what I yell at them. Hopefully it's been ingrained in their brain over and over again. And so much of it is like autopilot, really. You, sure. you just, you just put yourself in that position, you know, twice a week in practice and you get stronger der- through the rest of the, the training. And if you stay healthy and you put in the work, you have to, you have to be able to rely on those, those cues, those mantras, things like that. And so, um, you know, the, the biggest thing is when, it, when things are going great, it's easy, you know, but when they're not, that's when it's difficult. And so, to be able to rely on that, fall back on that, I think is important. And it just gives them a sense of, um, a sense of calmness, whether, if, whether the race goes out and super slow or they feel really bad, whatever it is, you just, you, you just, it doesn't matter. You just do it. You don't even think about it. You know, don't think, don't get in your way. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the, the training, I think, you know, you gotta be smart, but they gotta just be able to trust it and go, you know, it's like instinct. How is COVID affected what you guys are doing right now? COVID has been, you know, like it's some, some things it's been, a, I don't, it's not, not a blessing by any means because people are dying and losing their jobs. Yeah. But for us as a group, it's definitely given us time to look at um, 2021 mm-hmm. and actually be able to focus on it, um, get a little bit stronger. Everybody gets their first year out. Um, so 
but you know, people do want to race. Like they don't, they yeah. weren't expecting to shut down in March. And so, uh, we gave them some opportunities. The guys ran it, you know, guys and girls both ran a time trial, you know, like, uh, last week. Cause I want them to know, like they're fit, they've trained really well. And at the end of the day with COVID, if we have opportunities like we do hopefully this weekend with Nashville and, you know, and maybe, maybe a, another opportunity the next week, we're going to take the opportunities that come. And if not, we're all we can do is just break like we would and go focus to next year. And mm -hmm. if it means that next year, I mean, all these conferences are, you know, cl closed, you know, shutting down. If it means that the competitions shut down in the winter, we'll figure it out. But yeah. you know, at the end of the day, all we can do is train. We're excited to be together as a group, which is good. We're here in Boulder. Um, and so everybody's excited about that, you know, like the move and we're just going to focus on those things, get better. And hopefully when the world stabilizes, hopefully we're fit and ready. Talk to me about your setup in Boulder. Uh, is it are you doing group houses for the uh, men's team and for the women's team or? No, no. The two of the guys, Jordy and, and Carlos do live together. The other guys, uh, Ollie lives with, uh, Morgan McDonald, his, uh, college sure. uh, teammate and, uh, who runs for the Bossard group. And then, uh, um, and then Joe lives with, uh, with his girlfriend's stage and mm -hmm. they, so they're, but the, the women, I think are, their women are a couple of them are married, you know, they're all going to live separately, but, um, but you know, we're working on setting up our space for us, a gym and, you know, like, uh, just getting used to Boulder, you know, like it's a great place to run lots of, lots of teams in town. The Tin Man are in town, the boss mm -hmm. are in town, lead troops got a group, the roots group. I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's not saturated, but it's, it's heavy on heavy on good runners in town too. Sure, you know, which sure. It's cool to go down the street. Everybody looks like a professional runner or cyclist or. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you see the sport coming back in 2021? Are you expecting we're still going to have some challenges? Are you, uh, how, how are you advising your athletes right now? I think it will be a similar early on. I don't see mass, you know, events coming back. Uh, but the pop up, the pop up track meets have been successful. Mm -hmm. So I think you'll start there. Maybe there's a vaccine. Things get a little bit better. Um, but I mean, the, the Olympics is so important that I just don't yeah. see them not having it in some way. You know, it just, I think it's going to be there. I think people need that. They need that carrot to look at too. Like just fans even, you know, like people are craving anything. I mean, we, you know, like we had our, we, we did a, a unofficial official, you know, mild time trial here and it's getting picked up on, you know, Yahoo sports and, uh, sure. men's health, you know, uh, you know, like, yeah. because people need something to, to, we need sports, you know, <laughs> like people yeah. or fan, you know, fans love it. And so, um, but it, it will be a, a it's not going to happen overnight and it'll probably be a, just like it went into it. It's going to slowly come out of it, but you know, we're, we're invested. I mean, on, and you know, with the OAC, we've, we've given these guys, you know, like, uh, we've given them time. We say, we're invested in you and, whether mm -hmm. this happens this year or not, we're here. We're going to develop you guys. And so I think that's been important. That was a good sell for our team to know that they're coming to a team that, hey, we, we want you here on this team. And it doesn't matter what happens in, with COVID. We're going to, you know, we're going to, we're invested in you. What is, um, how fit are you right now? Are you still <laughs> training? I, uh, I look the same, but I breathe, <laughs> breathe a lot harder, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. haven't. I mean, I haven't lifted, uh, since I retired, I haven't, uh, my, I did one run that was 10 miles. Otherwise, mm -hmm. uh, eight miles was the max. I, I'm usually, I'm running about 30 to 40 miles a week, maybe three to four okay. days a week. Uh, okay. I was really busy with the move to, to Boulder and the team. And usually for me, it's three to six miles. Um, uh, but okay. I'm moving nonstop. So like, I, yeah. you know, like I, whereas before I, I did all the little things I lifted. I got worked on, you know, therapy five days a week. I mean, I was doubling. I, I, my body kind of stopped cold Turkey. And actually like, I got all these little things wrong with me now that sometimes, sometimes they're not even like real problems, but uh, yeah. you know, like I stopped taking care of all the little stuff and I felt it right away. So sure. I think once, once the team, you know, dies, you know, uh, everything dies down a little bit, the team goes on their, 
um, their their break. I want to get into a little bit more of a routine, but for now, I'm just focused on that. I get my squeeze my run in right before they while well, they're warming up sometimes, and Good. you know, but but uh, yeah. <laughs> Is the family moved? Uh, the family has moved. So my wife, Kaylin, um, and then our we have a daughter, Addison, who turns 13 uh, wow. next month, and our son, wow. Jude, is 10. So oh, that's they, uh, cool. Yeah, they're, they're, they're loving it. They're loving, you know, what, that was really one of the biggest things when we were going to talk sure. about taking this position was we're going to move. And, you know, there are, their grandparents were close by, but we had been to Boulder. Like, where else would we want to go? And this is the place. So they yeah, are very yeah. excited to be here. Yeah, it's a big move from the Midwest. I did it Midwest to California when I was in high school. And at first I didn't like it, but then, you know, that's where all my friends are. And then I moved my son back to Wisconsin because I wanted him to grow up in the Midwest. You know, it's yep. just a different lifestyle. Um, you, th- there's some challenges in our sport right now. Well, there's many. But um, what do you think about, have you taken any time to look at the recent shoe um, issues um and i know look we know a good shoe is better than a poor shoe yep. and you know i i did 100 mile weeks in a pair of shoes i bought from kmart for five dollars <laughs> and yes there were issues with it and when i got spent 32 dollars on a pair of running shoes which my dad almost killed me on um yeah it was better and the shoes now are tremendous um do you think that shoes can offer an unfair advantage? Well, certainly, uh, you're right. The the Kmart uh, shoe story does uh, does echo. I mean, I remember Mark Wetmore telling me that he uh, he bought like five pairs of Kmart shoes that he could wear for the same amount for one, and he yeah. went on a run on run on Magnolia, and it rained, and the shoe fell apart in the middle yes. of the run. So, yes, yes. But but now we go from you know durability and things to performance, uh, which maybe makes an illogical jump from, you know, like from shoe to shoe. Um, so, but now it's where it is. And so, you know what, it's, you got, it matters, you know, what you come to come to race day on, you know, and, and most every company makes solid training shoes, you know, like, but race day shoes is what matters. Right. And so, but we're committed. I mean, just like everybody else, like we want to innovate and have great, you know, great footwear and we have great stuff coming out the pipeline. And so at the end of the day, we're, we want our athletes to know they're going in with as good a product as anybody else. And so the good, the thing about our, uh, our group and this company is that we actually, I mean, we, we are on the calls with Zurich, you know, like, uh, they want our opinions and our input. So they'll, mm-hmm. they'll feed the product here. Um, we'll talk, I mean, I'll talk to the, the head office, to the head, head of, heads of the company and they'll, I can call up, you know, the, the owners of the company and whereas, you know, maybe other brands you can't. And so sure. I like that, you know, yeah. from our, yeah. you know, what we can offer, you know, our group. And I think that they, that was a good sales pitch to, to some of these, these runners too, is that, I mean, we had them talk to Olivier, you know, Bernard, sure. uh, one of yep. you know, the, one of the founders, like, and he, he has to say, if I want this person on the team, you know, or he at least gets to be part of that. Yeah. And, you can't do that with some brands. And so, sure. but that going in, we want everybody to know we're developing these products, shoes, racing spikes, racing flats that, um, that are going to give you, you're, you're going to give you every opportunity as you would with any other brand. All right. I'm going to throw the names of some meats in front of you and you're allowed no more than five words to describe them. Okay. All right. Veltklasse. American record. That's where I broke it. <laughs> Good. Olympics. Three times I made it. Best stage on earth. World championships. Hmm. Special because it's just running. Chicago Marathon. Oh, man. Well, it's probably my favorite. <laughs> New York City Marathon. No bigger stage, really. World Championships Half Marathon. Probably my best performance. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw some athletes at you. Ken and Issa 
probably one of the best. Um, highly Gaber Selassie. He is true inspiration. Uh, Mo Farah. Can close like nobody else. Des Linden. Inspiring beyond belief. Um, Andrew Weeding. Partners in crime now. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I, I heard about that. I needed to throw yeah. that in. Andrew's he's a, on, he's on the of, management team with me. So <laughs> Yeah, he's one of my favorites. And his Instagram and Twitter stuff when he was an athlete, <laughs> ooh, I would roar and I'd go, okay, can I publish this? Or am I going to get in trouble? You know, well, he's yeah, going to be the guy behind some of our marketing things. I hope so. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, so you got a room full of high school coaches and athletes, and you're showing them an on running shoe. Why should they give on running a chance? Well, aside from the fact that they look amazing, <laughs> yeah, the innovation that's happening is happening fast. So what you're going to get here is going to continue to evolve, but it's going to look great. It's going to be high performance. And the, the one, the shoes that are coming out in the next season, I think they're going to light the world on fire. Okay. If you had the 15 year old Dathan Ritzenhain in a room, what would you tell him? about running in life? I think, you know, the, the metaphor is really, you know, that you get out what you put in, right? But yeah. really, it doesn't matter sometimes. Other things happen. All you can do is do the best you can every day. Listen to the good people around you. But passion is what makes the difference. It's not whether or not you're ready to outwork anybody you know, because it doesn't matter. You can work hard for two years. You can work hard and get injured. You can work hard and not make the Olympic team. But if you have passion every day, that's what gave me a 16-year professional career. I never fell out of love with training. I never fell out of love with racing, even with stress fractures, missing Olympic teams, losing contracts. None of that stuff mattered. At the end of the day, if you have passion and you go out every day, you're going to do amazing things. You're going to miss some goals, but you're going to make some. And those, those goals that you set that you don't make, you'll learn more than you will from the American records and the Olympic teams. And if you don't have the passion, it doesn't matter. And so I, I was blessed to have that for all those years. And I think that if I look back and tell that 15 year old Dathan that he would run all the way to 37 through all those things, I think, I don't know if I would have believed it. <laughs> Dathan Ritzenheim, it's always been fun interviewing you. And uh, you've been patient with me now for 22, 23 years at least. Mm -hmm. We'll and, keep going, uh, and you'll be like uh, 90 yeah. by the end, right? Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, I, I look forward to seeing you at a track meet where we can stand against the fence and watch your athletes run in uh, a little safer time. But uh, I'm that sounds so great. And I, and I think, right. uh, and I will look forward to the next time we get stuck in uh, Amsterdam Airport yes. together. Too. Yes. So. You know, <laughs> I was going to bring up, the, you, there was two wonderful things you said to me there. One, you told me about how talented Matthew was, uh, <laughs> Centrowitz, which, you know, will someday be in a story and I, I will, will tell him, you know, I did get, the first time I met Matthew, I told him I knew his dad and he looked at me and he goes, am I like my dad? And I said, Oh dear God. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I really enjoyed that, but I enjoyed what the, that 10,000 you ran in, uh, at Hengelo was the last time highly, Ran a 10,000 as well. You, you know? You're right. And it was horrible. Yeah. It was like yeah. the one time it was bad in Hangalo. Yeah, it just was just strange, you know? So, some, you know, because I, I would get over there and that two hour bus was crazy. But, uh, <laughs> Nathan, thank you so much. A lot of good memories. I look right. forward to you uh, to taking a whole new group of athletes and showing them 
the way. So I feel Great. confident about that. Best wishes. This is Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance, and we featured Nathan Rittenheim, who's the head coach. Of, head I coach of the On Athletics Club. Awesome. I wanted to get the name in correctly. Okay. Nathan, thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks, Talk Larry. Bye now. Hey, sports fans. It's Larry Eater, Run Blog Run. This is Socialing the Distance. And today we featured, featured Dathan Rittenheim. Uh, I first met Dathan when he was 15 at the regional, Midwest Regional. Uh, excuse me, the footlocker cross country. And uh, he was about four foot ten. Nice young man. Watched him run through high school. Watched him run through college. Saw him in all three of his Olympic and his three world championships. Uh, was sitting in a hotel in Athens. Was it at? Yeah, it was Athens. Watching him run the American record for the 5,000 meters right after the Olympics uh, in 2004. Uh, but Dathan now is the head coach for the on running training group. He has uh, uh, eight athletes, um, it's between eight and 10 athletes, uh, men and women. And um, the men are focused a little more on the middle distances. The women have middle distances as well as longer stuff. And, uh, but uh, it should be a wonderful group and it should be a great, those athletes should get a lot from having Dathan work with them. Um, he's got a great sense of humor. He's got that Midwestern work ethic. Um, having raced from the mile to the marathon, uh, he told me that the marathon was much tougher than setting the American record for 5,000 meters at 1256. But uh, class act, good guy. Asked him about some of the athletes that he's run against, and uh, he had a lot to say and very introspective. Um, I asked his final question was, what would he tell a 15-year-old Dathan Rittenheim? And he told them to be patient. And he said that if he told the kid he'd be, still running at the age of 37 said he didn't think a 15 year old would believe that hell I didn't think I'd be alive at 21. So I don't, I'm not sure what most 15 year olds think about a 21 year old, a 25 year old, a 30 year old, 37 year old. Oh my gosh. You know, but Dathan is one of those wonderful examples of what kind of things we can learn from the sport of running in the U S and he is the American dream. You know, he came up through, Small high school in the Midwest, good program, and developed into a fine high school athlete, an even better college athlete, and then a world-class athlete. I've seen him at races all over the world, shared some time in an Amsterdam airport, chatting about Matthew Centrowitz and uh, a few other things. We'll tell those Matthew stories sometime. Anyhow, uh, it was a wonderful socialing the distance and we've had some really good people we've got some more coming up we're very happy to see on running putting some money where their shoes are and supporting the sport it's really important and that's how you really know a top brand is gets it when they're supporting developing performance so this is larry eater with socialing the distance today we featured dathan rittenheim three-time olympian uh farmer record holder American record holder in the uh, half marathon, or in the, uh, excuse me, in the 5,000. He did say the half marathon may have been his favorite and his best marathon uh, racing distance, and I tend to agree. But, Dathan, thank you again for your time today. And uh, our dear fans, please enjoy and uh, pass it around. Talk to you soon. This is Larry Eater, Run Blog Run, signing off.